Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you are new, welcome to my channel. My name is Jordan. As you can see by the title, I will be sharing five wishes that I think is important to ask when you are dating or before you take that further step into making the relationship official. I started to date very late, like ninth grade. Haven't really been on a lot of dates. I've had two long-term relationships. I learned that it is very important to really know a person. And these questions that I will give you guys to ask when you are dating are questions that I think will help determine whether or not you want to really be with this person and start a real relationship with this person. I feel like this generation nowadays is, I think he's cute, that's it, I'm in love. And that is so risky because you end up getting your heart broken. It is very important to ask questions, get to know people, communication is key. I will say from experience, if someone doesn't completely open up to you at first, I don't think that is necessarily a red flag, but I don't think that you should go further with this person until they get comfortable and y'all create a friendship to where they feel that they can open up a little more. And even if it ends up being a friendship, it's a secure foundation, a safe friendship, and you guys have created a bond to where you each feel comfortable. No dating expert, but let's get right into this video. First question that I have on my list is what are your religious beliefs and how much of a factor does it play in your life? For example, I'm a Christian. I go to church on Sundays, Bible study on Wednesdays. I pray every day. I think that this is a very important question because if you end up dating someone who doesn't have the same religious belief as you doesn't believe in the same thing as you then that can really take a toll on your relationship some people may think that this is a pointless question but for me personally i cannot date someone who is not a christian because it plays such a huge role in my life you don't believe in going to church you don't even believe in god and then i fully believe in god and we're gonna go to church we're gonna serve the lord and i'm gonna instill it in my children then that creates a big huge problem <laughs> no matter what your religious beliefs are there should be some like-mindedness <laughs> in the relationship the second question that i would ask is what is your love language or what do you think your love language is i have talked to guys where i felt like i do not understand you goofy is one to where like i'm okay I'm all right, da da da. They need the most affection. Their love language is physical touch. And it's guys where they're all quiet and look like they don't want to be bothered. But their love language is acts of service. They will do anything for anybody at any time. So I think it's very important to try to understand what do you think that you need the most of? That's basically what a love language is. What do you think you need the most of? In order to feel like you're appreciated, in order to feel like you're loved, you're seen, you're understood. That's the main thing here. For example, my love language is acts of service. I love doing things for people. I love showing my love. Even if it's my presence, I love to pop up and surprise people, clean up for people when I go to their house, just randomly. On the other hand, I'm not the biggest physical touch type of person. So when you're with someone whose love language is physical touch, then that's something that you need to be able to communicate about like, hey, this isn't my biggest love language. However, it's yours and to make this work, I think that I can start by, you know, holding your hand small things before just jumping in and doing big things while you're still dating. What type of environment were you raised in? Were you raised on survival mode? Were you raised more off love? Was there not a lot of affection and support in your household? What is your relationship like with your family? This can also lead to them telling you some childhood stories to see what type of things have shaped them and made them the way that they are today. If someone was raised in a more so survival mode type of family household, maybe they don't really trust people often maybe they're more closed in or on the other hand if someone was raised on a very loving and supportive household then they have love and support to give because they know how to give it so that is a very important question that's the type of question that can just lead to more questions being answered without you even having to ask them what does your future look like what are your plans for your future how many kids do you want what pets what are some things that you would like to have accomplished things like that what are some trips you would like to take that's also a good question because if their future looks way different than your future looks then that can also help you to say okay maybe it won't work because this is what i plan to do i'm going to be in a whole other state it just 
will give you a broad view and perspective of the way that they think and the things that they want for their life and their future. This last question, which I don't think is too important, but it's basically a bonus question, but I think it's important. Have you ever cheated or been cheated on? Now, I don't think this is the type of question that should be asked on a first date or even the first day. I don't think that this question is basically necessary, but I like to ask this question because to me, honestly, it helps me to see the way you think, really, the way you react. Because most times when you ask a guy this question, it's like, sometimes they'll smirk and then they'll answer, sometimes they'll smile, sometimes they'll give you a straight up answer. But their reaction to the question really shows me a lot. Also can help you to see their view on females, how they treat females. But some guys will straight up be like, no, I've never cheated, I don't condone cheating, the smallest thing. I'm done. Like, they don't play that. Some guys will smile like, nah, but I've been cheated on. You know how guys do. That tells me a lot. And most times when you're talking like that, a little smirking and stuff, you done did something. It's not even funny in the first place. Why are you smiling? Always think about the future when you are talking to someone. Experience is the best teacher. My mom once told me, you don't know what you don't want until you know better. So never be afraid to say, hey, I enjoyed the date. Thank you for inviting me out. However, I think this would be the last time that I see you. <laughs> Maybe, you know, in a nicer way, but it is what it is. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe. Also share and comment if you'd like. If you'd like to see more of these videos, comment what kind of videos specifically that you'd want to see from me. As I said before, I'm no relationship coach, no expert or anything like that. I just like to share my wisdom. I like to sprinkle my wisdom a little bit. So, thank you for watching. I will see you all in the next video.